Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Goldwing Docs. Hey, it's been a while, but we've got something great for you on this video. A brand new camera from Innov. Coming up. A lot of you will know that I have run the Goldwing Docs website for, I think, 13 years, 14 years, quite a long time. It is the premier website forum for Goldwing owners, and I've also run the Goldwing Docs YouTube channel. Of course, now we have the Canard Boulevard YouTube channel, which is my airplane channel. Um, again, links to everything in the below if you care to visit. And during the time that I've run the Goldwing Docs uh, forum and YouTube channels, uh, I have done a number of product reviews, but one company in particular I've done repeated reviews for, and that company is Innov. Innov makes tiny little camera systems for primarily motorcycles. They call them action cameras. And uh, I have been associated with Innov for I don't even know how many years now. It's probably seven or eight years, and I've, I've reviewed and tested many, many, many of their cameras. Um, I've actually lost count of how many different camera systems are theirs that I've tested. They started out making permanently installed motorcycle cameras. So these are small bullet-shaped cameras uh, that you would mount on your motorcycle permanently and they would be powered by the motorcycle, different than from the action cameras. And that was their distinction. And as technology came up higher and higher, of course, they got higher and higher resolution that, you know, they have 4K cameras and so on. Uh, they added a second camera. So you have one facing forward, one facing backward. Uh, they recently, I think it was last year, I did a review on a, their first helmet camera, which was a battery powered uh, camera that mounts directly to your helmet. So it basically, whatever you look at, it takes a video of. And now this is their newest camera, the K6. This is a multi-purpose camera and it's different than all the other cameras uh, in a couple, well, one main important way. And that is that it is entirely powered by USB. So no internal battery, no motorcycle power supply. Uh, it, it, it depends on external USB power. Be that a, it could be a USB power pack for portable use. It could be plugged into a car or motorcycle or airplane or anything of that sort. Anything that supplies a, a five volt USB power will power this camera system. And that means it's no longer limited to motorcycles. You could install this on bicycles, cars, airplanes, or your motorcycle. And it has a few important benefits that you aren't going to find with a lot of other camera systems. So I have this K6 system that we're going to open up and have a look at and test in just a few minutes. But I wanted to let you know that not only do I have this, this K6 camera system, I have another K6 camera system. So Innov has very kindly sent me two, one for me to use and test, and one that, well, this one's not mine because it's yours. This is a giveaway K6 system. These cameras are about $300 retail and I will be giving away this one to you. Now for you Canard Boulevard watchers, I have been giving away um, prizes on the Goldwing Dock site uh, every month for over 10 years. And uh, sometimes they're, you know, $30 prize. Sometimes it's a couple hundred dollar prize. And for the month of December, the prize will be this K6 camera systems. So the winner will be drawn on December 31st of this year. So how you actually enter this, all the Goldwing Docs people are gonna know exactly how you enter this. You have to be a member of the Goldwing Docs website, which is free, and you have to click uh, join the contest at the beginning of the month and then every time you post something in the forum you get an, a free entry. Uh, Canard Boulevard, if you want to win this system for your airplane, go ahead on the Goldwing Docs website, create an account, it's free, enter the contest and there you go, there's, there's your uh, entry. You can have a chance to win this as well and uh, good luck to you. In the meantime, let's open this one up and have a look at what's inside. Now, normally when I do these reviews, I will have done a ton of research ahead of time and found out all about the, there is to know about the product. And this time we are going to be discovering it together. 
I can tell you it has two cameras, one for the front, one for the back. The front camera is a 2K, the rear camera is 1080p, or if you want to swap it around so you're looking at higher resolution backwards, you can do that too. It has, an, like all the other in of products, it has a phone app that lets you access it, control it, set the configuration, so on. Requires an external power supply. Uh, rear view mirror function, so you can use your phone to look at your rear camera and use it as a rear view mirror. It is waterproof, it says easy to install. So you can see here they're saying, hey, you can use it on a bicycle, car, what have you. They are primarily marketing this as a bicycle camera. Uh, however, in they do have a, a box packaging that says it's for motorcycles as well. And when I approached them and said, hey, you know what? This might be really good for airplanes too. And they said, oh, okay, go for it. Do what you can. So we'll definitely have a look at this in the airplane for sure. So there is the foam uh, protective piece there and the cameras. And let's pull out what's underneath here. If you remember the Innov K5 system, it had a front camera that included the DVR where the, the uh, TF card went, the memory card, and uh, then it had a second camera. And it looks like they have gone with the same system again here. So let me undo these wires here so we can get a better look at what we're dealing with. So here is the front camera. You can see it's got this protective sticker that I will leave on for now. And there's a, a single button here and what looks like some screws here. And I assume this is gonna give us access to the TF card. As you can see, I'm not even bothering with the instructions right now because I'm pretty familiar with how Inov does things. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be where we're gonna find our memory card slot. Yeah, that's exactly it. So you can see there's a, a type C connector under there. And then you can see here there is a a type a USB-C right above that is the TF card slot so I will find a memory card to stick into there. Okay we will be writing a lot of data very quickly onto this because we have this 2k camera in the front and a, and a HD camera in the back both writing to the card at the same time so you need a fairly fast card and it needs to have a fair bit of storage and that's exactly what I have here. I've got a, a 256 gigabyte uh, you can see it's a V30 and you can see all the symbols on there. This is a very fast card. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the description below is where you can get one of these. And this camera will handle up to 256 gigabyte cards. So let's go ahead and stick that in there. I don't know which way it goes in, but we'll try it one way. If it doesn't go, no, it doesn't look like it. Let's try it the other way. There we go. So as you can see, just like every other TF card, you push it in until it clicks and then it stays in place. And then we will put this back on. And you'll notice this has a gasket around, silicone gasket around it, which then seals this once you insert it. And you get the uh, connector in there and then you push it and it seals it, making this weatherproof. Uh, it says weatherproof and I think it was IP67. Yes, IP67 waterproof. And uh, that is what all the Innov cameras that I've used have said. And the previous one, the K5 that I had on my Goldwing uh, had the exact same type of silicone gasket on there. And that hung out in on my motorcycle for quite a few years in the pouring rain and everything else. And it's worked just fine. It's never leaked. So, and then we have a button there. And then we have this obviously to power it. Then we have the back camera with what looks like a proprietary weatherproof connector here. That's exactly what that is. And then we have an extension wire here so that the proprietary camera can be mounted far away from this one. Or the, so that the, the rear camera can be mounted far away from this one. So then here's our weatherproof connector. So we have two cameras and we just need to apply power and it should start recording. Now there will be a microphone in here as well. Uh, I'm not sure where it is in, on this one. There usually is like a tiny little hole that uh, works as a microphone. Let's have a look and see what the instructions say. It 
So let's see, internal microphone is right on the top. So it looks like the microphone is actually built into here inside where you can't see it. So um, that's fine, especially if it's gonna be windy, if you're gonna have this out hanging in the wind. Uh, this is the button slash indicator and screw holes, thumb screws, camera. Okay, so we can load up our app. Now we need the in of app, which we can see here is on that QR code. So there is the in of app and we'll install that. And then we can open that and it will be used to configure and connect to this camera. Okay, so now we have, I just got a, a regular battery pack here. And so we'll just plug the camera into the battery pack and turn on the battery pack and we'll see what happens with the camera. Nothing. Turning the battery pack on and the camera does not energize. So I wonder if it doesn't like this type of battery pack. This is a rather old battery pack. It's not in a, that intelligent. And no, it doesn't seem to want to communicate with that battery pack. Let me find a different battery pack. One moment, please. Actually, the problem was not with the battery pack at all. The problem was with the operator. Every InnoV camera I've used in the past powered up automatically as soon as you applied power. This one's different. You actually have to press and hold the button on the camera for three seconds in order, in order to turn it on. And if I had actually bothered to read the instructions before I started this video, I would know that. In any case, I went back later and tried this battery pack and it worked fine as long as you actually turn the camera on first. Back to the video. All right, so I've got a different power supply and I've plugged it into there and we'll plug it in to the camera. You can see the power supply itself lights up, turns on, so it's detected the camera. So let's push and hold the power button. And there we go. Now we have a red light, so the camera is powering up. And now that we're doing that, uh, it should start going into Wi-Fi mode. So we will set up uh, on the phone, it's gonna come up and look for a Wi-Fi signal from here. And you can see there it is there, the in of one. So we're gonna join that in of uh, Wi-Fi. And uh, the password it says is a default is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it should join that. Now it's connected to the camera. Okay, so we should be connected to the camera at this point. And you can see it's no longer flashing because we've connected to it. So if we click on this, it should show us the, uh, what we're seeing in the camera and that's exactly what we've got there so let's rotate that so we can see we've got two cameras this is the first one right there and then this is the second one right there and we should be able to yes it is recording you can see it's flashing there and uh, so that tells us that right now this camera is recording. We can pause that. And if we back up, then we should be able to, oh, you can actually, this, this takes individual photographs. So you can use it as a still camera as well. So if we wanted to, we could die. Uh, so if we wanted to, we could take a picture of something here. We'll just point this down here and press the button and take a picture. So now if we go into documents, we can see the camera files. Um, okay, and we'll look at continuous videos, and here's the videos that uh, we have recorded. And it looks like it has automatically set the date and time and everything on there. So let's play this video. And there you can see there's the video that I was actually recording. So that works fine. Um, I have to say about accident videos and protected videos, if, you, if it detects a, a sudden jar, it will actually lock a video and uh, there's nothing in there now but if you actually um, crash or something you can set it so that it will identify that and lock that special uh, video um, 
If we go into the configuration screens, so here's our configuration. You can see you can set the, the Wi-Fi. Uh, here's the resolution. If we, you can downgrade the resolution if you want. If you want them both just, just to be HD, you can do that. Um, and uh, the bit rate, we basically want a high bit rate that's gonna give it the best quality. Uh, you can change the orientation mirror. If so, if you have this camera mounted in such that it's upside down, you can change, you know, take care of that. Or if it's uh, you want it mirrored and that sort of thing. Same thing for front and rear, and it will start a new recording every so many minutes. And so let's say five minutes. So it'll 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 stop recording and and well, it won't stop. It'll 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 start moving and start recording a new video every five minutes. The preview is going to show you the front and the rear. Audio level, we can change how what the, the recording level is that it's actually recording. Uh, you can set the date and time on the camera. Uh, if you want it shown on the screen, we can turn that off entirely so there's no date and time. And if you want watermark text on there, you can it defaults to saying in of, and we can just say we don't want any watermark text on our video. Oh, it says we can't be null. Well, hell, what if we put in some spaces? There we go. Oh, it doesn't like that either. So you have to have a watermark? I am not a fan of that. So how do we get rid of that? I'll just put a, a period in there for now. Okay, so, um, and it's still saying in of. It's showing us the card capacity and we can format that if we want, which is always a good thing to do when you have a, a new camera is to format the card in the device that you're actually recording. Here is the G sensor. Oh, we want to change our camera rate to 60 hertz because that's the light, the frequency for voltage over here. G sensor is if it's going to detect an impact. Uh, we can clear the cache of the camera and let's see, we can change other things in here. You can see the firmware version and so on. All right, so it took a little bit of faffing about to get this working. It obviously did not like this older one. Uh, it is drawing two amps and you can see it's actually recording because it's flashing red it, and uh, this camera is is a little bit warm because it does have the DVR in there this one is is not warm at all and of course I forgot to take those stickers off so all the video that I've just taken is going to look foggy and terrible but so be it all right so I'm going to put these screws back in and I should note that uh, it will loop over so if you have uh, 256 gigabytes of video taken on this camera and it fills up, it doesn't just stop recording, it will just start overwriting the oldest files, which is a, a kind of a neat feature. So now that we have this actually running, and uh, we'll have a look at the mounts that it comes with. And here's the mounts for the front camera. Whole bunch of stuff. You can see we've got a standard uh, GoPro type mount here which can then latch, and this is, looks like it's for a, a helmet, it's curved, so you have a GoPro type thing for a helmet. And then we have this piece here that then is gonna go around the camera to hold it in place. And then a screw of some sort to hold, to screw in there and hold that camera to that mount. So if you wanna use a, um, a GoPro style mount, you can do that. It also has these um, permanent mounts that you can put around a handlebar. And we've got these right angle brackets that along with various screws and nuts and pieces of rubber to keep it from sliding around and some 3M VHB tape allows you to mount that camera in one of many different ways. And then looking at the rear camera mounts, it looks to be fairly similar, but unfortunately no GoPro style mount on this one. We have this piece here that uh, the rear camera can then fit through. And again, you get these rubber things that you stick on the inside so it can't move around. And then you have these brackets here that then get mounted to something. And what that something is, we don't know. But uh, you have to... Oh, what we got this here? No idea. Um, that is one of the things I noticed with uh, the you know systems is that you get this 
plethora of mounting options, but no instructions whatsoever. So it's pretty much up to you to figure out how this stuff all goes together and works. Um, I would definitely prefer a GoPro type mount to use for the back as well. Uh, we'll have to see if we can get something like that to work. All right, so we did get that recording and uh, we should, and, you know, I noticed that it's actually, it looks like it stopped recording. I wonder why. Let's have a look at the app and see if it says it's still recording. I did notice as I was uh, testing this out and walking around and, and uh, that, that this camera, the one with the DVR on it, is getting reasonably warm, which means it's pulling a fair amount of current. So I thought, let me plug in my tester here and see exactly um, how much is it actually pulling. So we'll plug it in there, turn on the camera by holding it down for three seconds. And it's drawing 0.63 amps, 0.53. So the Wi-Fi is now on. So with the Wi-Fi, it's drawing close to an amp. Well, it's up and down. So let me actually connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so now I've connected to the Wi-Fi and I can see the image on my camera on the phone and it's still drawing you know, three quarters of an amp. So, I mean, it's not a t terrible amount, but it's, it's, uh, it's definitely some. Um, so you may want to make sure that your, your power supply is going to be able to supply enough current for enough time that you can actually use for this for as long as you're going to need it to use it for. Uh, one of the things I do wish it had was an automatic uh, power up and power down. Uh, when you push the push and hold it for three seconds, it turns it on. You push and hold it for three seconds, it turns it off. And then, of course, you can see, hopefully, that this goes down to zero, which it does after it's shut down. Um, I do wish that it would just there was an option to have it power up automatic or to start recording automatically as soon as it saw power so you don't actually have to manually turn it on each time which is a bit of a pain and all the other in of cameras have that feature so I'm kind of surprised that this one does not now I do wonder what will happen if it loses power while it's recording because it doesn't have any internal power and does that mean that maybe the uh, the video would be corrupted or the card would be corrupted so i've put a, a a card in there and let's plug it in and i'm going to turn it on push down the button for three seconds all right so you can see it's lit up and it's flashing red which means it's initializing the green will start flashing which means wi-fi is active and as soon as the red turns solid okay now we're recording so now it's recording on both cameras. Um, let's unplug the power and see what happens. And it immediately just shuts off. Okay, well, let's see what happened to the video file that was being written to the card. So what happened is nothing. How it appears to work is it records to a buffer inside and then just dumps it to the card really quickly uh, once in a while. And uh, so it's not continuously writing to the card. Um, so when it does lose power, it I guess there must be enough of a capacitor in there that keeps it powered up so that it won't trash the card by losing power halfway through a write cycle. And uh, as a result, what you get is you lose about five seconds, the last five seconds before the power went out, which is fine. As long as it doesn't trash the card, which is what I was uh, worried about. All right, so I messed around with these mounts a little bit and you can see what I've done here. I took a, a, a GoPro mount that I had and uh, I've got this extension on here and then I used the ring that this camera came with. You can see it's uh, bolted around there and there's a one of these little silicone, actually not for this one, it, it has a, a raised bit at the back here where this ring clamps tightly. So I made sure that the camera was in there right side up so it's not skewed and tilted. And that I can uh, mount anywhere and the camera then can articulate and point where it needs to go. For this one, I'm not quite sure where this one's gonna go yet, but what I did is I used its mount that it comes with and you do need to take one of these silicone strips that it comes with and stick it on the inside of this ring. 
and then that keeps the camera from turning uh, once the ring is, tr is clamped down. And then you put that little metal piece in there with the screws that clamps this around the camera. Again, you gotta make sure that it's right side up. And then I've got this little bit here and it comes with one of these uh, double-sided foam sticky things here. So I guess maybe that can stick on there somewhere. Um, I'm thinking also that maybe I'll uh, adapt some other kind of um, uh, GoPro mount to this thing and so that uh, I can oops, mount that on this somehow so that this can actually um, connect on a GoPro mount. I wonder if that would fit in there actually. That might even fit. No, that wouldn't work. But um, yeah, so I, I want to try and get this on another GoPro mount so that I can I can use this as a, a mounted um, in e either inside or outside airplane or wherever I want to put it. So we'll, we'll uh, work on that. Most of these types of action cameras don't do well close up, but I'm actually pretty surprised at how well these do focus uh, at fairly near conditions. This is the front camera here, and then we'll have a look at the rear camera. I still have it uh, in mirror mode here. And you can see it is about the same. It uh, focuses a little bit closer than the front camera can. So let's uh, walk outside and have a look in the daylight. You do see amazing saturation. Look at the colors that you're seeing on these cameras. And you can see the detail, even when there's motion, uh, there is not much in the way of digital artifacts. You can see it does capture the details when it's blown up fairly well. And uh, there's not, in terms of motion where there's th complex things like grass and pavement, you aren't seeing the digital artifacts from compression. And you can really see that here when I go along close to the ground, there's almost no digital artifacts until you get quite a, uh, far away where it's, it's using less bitrate to encode the uh, image. So that's really impressive. Let's do the exact same thing with the rear camera at 1080p. Of course, we're gonna have less re resolution here because it's a, a, a lower resolution camera. But looking at the same thing, you can see the same saturation, the same colors. If we zoom in, we can see you know, not quite as many details, a little bit more compression artifacts simply because uh, we are using a lesser bit rate for the same image, but uh, pretty impressive. And again, we'll walk along and look at the pavement. And once again, you see almost no evidence of, uh, of uh, compression artifacts. So very impressive. Looking at night, obviously we're gonna see motion blur because it's a, it's a digital camera and that's just the, the nature of the beast, but it's quite sensitive in the dark. I'm very impressed with how good the, the front camera, which is the 2K camera, picks up. And this was a very, very dark night. So, and here's the rear camera, which actually does even better than the front camera. Not surprising, uh, the lower resolution cameras tend to pick up more light. So this is a, a pretty good uh, result for a, a 1080p camera in very dark night. So it's a couple days later, I'm wearing a sweater because uh, my furnace packed it in a couple days ago and it's... Uh, been a very cold couple of days. Uh, it's gonna be a few more days before we get a new furnace installed, so yeah. So I took these cameras and I mounted them inside my airplane. I thought, okay, I'll get some good footage from inside the airplane and see how these cameras perform. It was a really good plan, uh, and as a lot of plans happen, uh, they don't go exactly as planned. This camera, the front camera, performed far better than I expected. Uh, I actually wasn't expecting that this was gonna work well in airplanes. I thought it might be overwhelmed by vibration and noise, but it worked beautifully. It, it gave amazing images. Uh, the video on it is very good. Uh, the microphone in this, I thought was just gonna be overwhelmed by engine noise in the airplane. It, it performed admirably. I, I'm really, really impressed. The color saturation and the, the details that is, came out of this camera, um, I think I'm gonna keep this in my airplane. I think this might be my new airplane camera. Uh, I'm really impressed with it. Um, the rear camera, I had similar high hopes for. I was going to actually have this mounted inside the cockpit, pointed at me, so that then I could talk to you on camera. And uh, 
you know, talk about the camera and what I'm doing in the airplane and so on. I thought, that's a really great idea. I can have both cameras going at once and it's all recording to the, the one video card. And that would have been really great, except uh, the way I mounted this inside the cockpit didn't work. And on takeoff, it fell onto the floor and I didn't notice it. So I have a video uh, <laughs> of the rear camera that looks like this. And you know, I, I've got about a half hour of that. But let's have a look at the camera video from the front camera, which actually came out really, really good. So my impression of this camera system, um, I actually really like this camera system. The previous K5 was a 4K camera, which had a lot more resolution, but I, I actually had it always dialed down to 2K, which is what this camera is, because the 4K files are massive. They're huge. And anytime I want to store them or edit them or do anything with them, my computer is just dying because it's got these, you know, 15, 70 gigabytes of, of uh, video data and it uses up disk space like crazy. This camera, it seems, I mean, the 1080p, I shoot most of my video in 1080p, which is HD, which is what you get out of the rear camera. However, having the 2K camera allows you to zoom in on things and not lose the resolution, but not have the massive files created by a 4K camera. I am really impressed with the color saturation and detail on this camera, uh, as well as the absence of digital artifacts and motion blur in broad daylight. And obviously no camera is gonna deal well with uh, motion blur in the dark, unless they're a night vision camera, which these have very good low light performance, but they are not, you're gonna get motion blur at night. Both the cameras, really impressed me with the the saturation and the and the detail and the absence of digital artifacts even when there was a lot of high motion uh, i will say that in the couple of days since i started recording this video i have talked to Inov, and they already have firmware that fixes the reverse mirror image where you couldn't actually mirror this rear camera properly or invert it and it wasn't saving in the app. That was a firmware issue. They've already issued a, a new firmware that fixes that. So I just didn't even know about it. So once I installed the firmware, it was fixed. Uh, the other two issues, the one where I was talking about, uh, I wish that you could get rid of the watermark on here because you can't, you can, you can put a, a single character in there, but you can't get rid of the watermark entirely. Their engineers are going to be looking at that, so that should be coming. And the last one was that I wish it powered up by itself when you when it detected power that the camera started up and started recording on its own. And apparently that is a hardware change and has already been done. So this is a, I don't want to say prototype, but pre-production version of the camera. The current production version of this camera now has that feature that you can have it automatically start recording as soon as power is applied. And that's it, that's the end of my Innov K6 action camera review. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. I do read and answer those comments. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. And don't forget to go enter in the contest to win your own K6 camera, uh, the one that's sitting right off there, off camera. We will be giving that away December 31st of this year, 2023 and uh, you could be the winner. Free to enter. Uh, follow the instructions in the description below. That's it. Thanks for watching.